Hi, I'm Antonio Centeno. I'm the founder of Real Men Real Style. Today, gentlemen, I'm going to be giving you 13 tips on how to find the perfect travel shirt for you. Guys, there isn't a perfect travel shirt for everyone. However, if you follow these 13 tips, if you use this 13 part checklist, which you can go over to Real Men Real Style, you can download. Guys, I feel that you're going to make a smart purchasing decision and you'll be able to build a wardrobe which complements your individual style. So whether you're leaving South Texas and you're heading to London or you're leaving Wisconsin and you're going over to Thailand, perhaps you're down in South India and you're going to be traveling over to South Africa for the first time. Guys, I don't know your situation, but I do know if you use this checklist, you'll be able to buy the right travel shirt to suit your needs. You ready for it? Okay. So number one, let's focus on the fit of the clothing. Very important that you buy a shirt right off the rack or if you get it custom made that it fits you properly. I've got an entire infographic on how a shirt should fit. So go check that out. But understand that if you mess up fit, I've got it listed number one for a reason. It is the core, it is the core leg on the style pyramid. So understand fit, fabric and function, but of all of them, fit is the most important. If you get this fit wrong, none of the other ones matter. Make sense? Okay. So get that fit right. Number two, comfort. So related to fit, because if the shirt's too tight, it's not going to be comfortable. You're going to have hot spots, but comfort also depends on the material that's used. I like for my shirts to be made usually from, this one's made by Libertad Apparel. Uh, It's made out of a very tightly woven wool. And so because it's got this tight weave on it, uh, it actually is very breathable. It's very lightweight. It still has a very nice look to it. I'm going to get to some of the other points. They'll have an effect on comfort, but you need to be comfortable. So practice wearing the shirt before you actually travel the world in it. Make sense? Point number three is durability. So you don't want a shirt that's going to fall apart on you. I like for my perfect travel shirt to actually have a brand that you trust that's well made. Turn the shirt inside out. Look at the inside stitching of the shirt. Look at the material. Pull on it. Pull on the shoulder. It's better for it to rip before you take it with you than you're going to you know, find yourself you've got a ripped shirt and you're going to try to get that fixed on the road. Inspect the buttons. Make sure they're not going to fall off, that they're well sewn. A lot of times, especially lower end brands will actually sell you a shirt, the buttons are going to fall off the first or second cleaning. However, if you're on the road, you can get probably some spot repairs fixed. Uh, Just go to a tailor. Number four, quick drying. So why is this one important? Well, if you're traveling, you're on the road, you may have to actually wash the shirt right there in the hotel. I've had to do this before and it's something where you want to be able to hang it and then have it dry within, you know, hopefully half a day, maybe 12 hours. Key is you don't want something made from a really thick material, which is going to take a day or two to dry. Number five is it should be lightweight. This has partly to do with the material and the actually the tightness of uh, the weave of the actual thread, but it also has to do with the structure and, and the way that it's actually woven. If you've got a shirt that, and you see this a lot in dress shirts, it's going to have a herringbone or, or a twill weave. That isn't going to be really uh, lightweight. It's also not going to be very breathable. So you want to be careful with things like that. Look for something that almost if you held it up to light, maybe you can even see through it a bit, but whenever you're wearing it, it it isn't see-through. Number six is a versatile color. So all of the shirts I've got laid out here have two things in common. They are either blue or they are either white. I talk about this in my personal image system, but those are the two foundation colors. There's a number of reasons why. You're more trustworthy if you wear this color, so that's actually been shown by research, but they work with most men's complexions. They're very easy to match. You want something that is going to work with everything else in your wardrobe. Now, I didn't talk about pattern in this entire list, but I like to first go with solids and I like to go with lighter blues, whites, uh, darker blues, indigos. Those are fine. Those are all great. Uh, Maybe even a light colored tan is maybe a fifth choice, but guys stick with blues. I think you're going to, you know, that's going to be ideally, you know, a variation of it, or you could, you know, in some cases bring in white, especially if you're going to be going on a business trip and assuming it fits all the other points we're going to talk about. So point number seven, it should be stylish. So when I say stylish, I mean classically stylish. You don't want to go with something that grabs a lot of attention. So look at all the style features on the shirt. Is the collar, is it way too long? Does it look like it's out of the 1970s? That would disqualify the shirt. Is it too rugged? Look, I mean, does it look like a safari shirt? Unless you're going on safari, you want to be careful. Um, Libertad Apparel, uh, 
the company that made this shirt right here. What I like when Kyle put this together is he said he wanted to create a travel shirt, which actually didn't look like a safari, like a guy was going on safari. So look for things like that. And I like keeping my travel shirts simple. I can dress them up. I can dress them down stain resistant. You want to choose a material that actually resists stains. I like darker colors because, you know, especially if I'm not going on a business trip, white does have that issue that it's in a sense going to be easier to, you know, get a coffee stain on it. It's going to be more noticeable. However, look when you're buying the shirt, maybe it's been treated or maybe it's made from like this shirt uh, of a very tightly woven wool, which is actually going to resist stains wrinkle resistant. So there are cottons, there are blends out there that are treated and are wrinkle resistant. There are other ones which are actually made from a, uh, you know, again, wool and it's going to naturally resist. It's going to go back to its original shape. Something you have to be really careful with is this can actually be damaged by an iron. So make sure to iron wools, shirts on a very low setting. Cotton, you can turn it up all the way or actually almost all the way. Linen is where you can turn it up all the way. Now, linen is a great material but you want to be careful with it because it wrinkles so easily and that would be the big strike I would have against linen although it is uh, you know it is something that's very breathable number 10 odor resistance wool has a natural odor resistance and then there are other like high tech companies uh, this one's actually the ministry of supply they sent me some really cool clothing uh, they actually use synthetics and their stuff is i know a bit odor resistant cotton sometimes is going to hold odor and it's actually going to start getting stains on it as well so not uh, you know necessarily stain resistant functional this depends on your needs. So getting back to the Ministry of Supply, what I like about the underarm here is they have small little holes, so it actually is a little bit more breathable. However, you want to find what is going to function for your needs. This one right here has a pocket with actually a pen holder. I normally would not have my shirts. I like no pockets because I never hold anything here. However, I have a friend. He sells cars. He travels. He's in business. He loves keeping a pen right here. It's a really nice pen. So for him, he would want to make sure he has those pockets. Once you start going double pockets with epaulets, also I think that's a little bit too much. Most guys never use that. So number 12, the price. Now, you're going to pay a lot more usually for custom. And I've got a couple custom shirts here. Uh, this one's made by Naren Couture over in Bangkok. Um, I've got this one made by Modern Tailor. Both of them are great shirts. Again, notice how they were blue. This one actually made by Naren has a very classic stripe to it. Uh, Blank Label is an American company that I recommend. So everything I've talked about, you may want to consider going custom. The great thing about custom is you can choose the fabric, you can get the fit right, you can get most of these things and you can do that. The bad thing about custom is usually the price is going to be a bit higher. So if you go out there and you find you may be a company like Fifth and Lamar, pretty good on price and actually the way they're able to do that and still get a great fit is they focus on certain body types. You can also look around and maybe find a great sale at your box store. Number 13, where to find all of this stuff. So if you go over to Real Men Real Style, I'm going to link to a number of the different companies. I've got some other companies that are making some really cool shirts that fit a lot of this. This company, Trim, uh, they actually make them in Los Angeles. They designed them in Nashville. Uh, now, the issue with this is the versatile color here. This isn't so much of a versatile color. However, it fits great. It grabs attention. It's not probably the perfect travel shirt unless you're looking to grab attention. Um, suit Supply makes some pretty darn great. You know, the only thing I've got with Suit Supply is they won't sponsor me or Aaron Marino or any of my other friends. Uh, they, they're doing their own thing. So maybe you want to send them an email and say, hey, Suit Supply, you guys should sponsor Antonio over at Real Men Real Style or Aaron Marino over at Alpha M. We'd appreciate that. You know, but they've actually made some very lightweight and they've got their a blue line over there that's relatively affordable. Uh, now we're talking, I think it's like $70, $80 a shirt. So depends on where you're at, what is affordable. And it may be in some countries that you can get something custom made. And because you live there and it's just right down the street from you, uh, that you may be able to get it at a better price than what I just quoted there. Guys, go over to Real Men Real Style. I have a complete checklist of each of the 13 things I talked about. And let me know in the comments, where's your go-to favorite travel shirt. We'd love to hear from you. Take care. See you in the next video.